All right, doing the whole split screen thing once again uh, because the Logitech software still doesn't work. Good work, Logitech. Today we're doing the John Lineker versus John Dodson Battle of the Johns, Battle of the former Flyway Johns, now fighting at Bantamweight. Man, there's a lot of parallels there. Um, fighting each other in the main event of Fight Night Portland, Fight Night 96. It's got a couple different names. We'll just go with Fight Night Lineker versus versus Dodson. Excuse me. Starting at the bottom, working your way up. Um, I must say this is one of the more interesting fight pass cards of like the last little while. Like uh, not not that the whole cards on fight pass, but the fight pass portion is actually pretty interesting. Um, Kelly Fasholds versus uh, Ketlin Vera going with Fasholds by decision. She's just a little bit closer to being a somewhat tested out, somewhat proven commodity. Um, both of these ladies like to stand. Fasholds, I think, is the more technical of the two on the feet. Um, and that's probably going to allow her to get, pick up the decision. Cody East versus Curtis Blades going with Curtis Blades uh, via decision. Um, both of these guys are fundamentally speaking wrestlers. East likes to use it in reverse as a uh, semi Chuck Liddell type fighter where he keeps it standing. Um, and both lost their UFC debuts, but both have a lot of potential long term in the division. Um, heavyweight prospects don't come around a lot, and that's why I was actually really disappointed to see Curtis Blades fighting against um, Francis Nagano in his first fight because it was a battle of. Honestly, two of the better prospects in the division um, in terms of unrealized potential. Uh, you, like, if we're talking who's the prospect in the division, it's probably uh, seeing this whole Wada possible infraction thing doesn't go too badly. Is probably Ruslan uh, Magomedov, but these were the two that kind of were more raw than him with a lot of potential, and they went head to head. Blades lost pretty badly. He's still a really good wrestler with developing stand-up. Cody's stand-up is probably the better of the two, more developed. But I think Blades can hang enough on the feet and probably get this to the ground at some point and pick up the win. Of course, I am kind of blinded by Cody East hate at the same time. Uh, if you're not familiar with his backstory, there's some child abuse and rape allegations and um, unpleasantness. Um, in fairness, he's kept his nose clean for a while, it seems. But... Um, that still is, it, it's it's not a pleasant situation. We'll just leave it at that. Jonathan Wilson versus Ian Kutalaba. I'm going with Kutalaba via TKO. Wilson is a tremendous athletic prospect. Like he, um, I think he's a bit old. I think he's like late 20s, which kind of sours it a little bit. But he is fantastically athletic. He's just very, very raw. So is Kutalaba. Probably not his equal in terms of the um, athletic standpoint. But I think he's a bit ahead on the technical level. Wilson is super, super hittable. Kudalaba should be able to hit him. He hits very, very hard. Probably a TKO at some point. Tanner Corey versus Nate Marquardt. Going with Nate Marquardt via TKO. There's not a lot of guys that make Marquardt over at this point. The problem with McCrory as well, he still has a lot more left in the tank than Marquardt, who really I would not complain if he retired directly after this fight or directly before this fight, to be honest. But just stylistically, McCrory likes to get you to the ground and out-wrestle you. He's not going to be able to do that easily against Marquardt, both in the get-him-to-the-ground part and the out-grappling part, because Marquardt's still a very good grappler. And Marquardt should have the edge on the feet, despite being incredibly hittable. But McCrory's stand-up is not great, and therefore it may not come back to hurt him in this way. Kaden Nakamura versus uh, Eliza Zaleski Dos Santos. Uh, going with Kaden Nakamura by decision. Not a lot to break down here. I just don't have really any belief in Zaleski uh, is what it kind of comes down to. Shamil Abdur, uh, Abdurhimov versus Abdurakhimov. There we go. Versus Walt Harris. Going with Walt Harris being TKO. Walt Harris is another one of those heavyweight prospects. In a way, I think he's a bit too old to be a prospect. I'm pretty sure he is actually quite old. I'd have to look it up to know for sure. But I'm pretty sure this is the case. But fantastically athletic. Very powerful. Um, Shamil is the more technical fighter by really any sort of metric. But he is hittable. Walt Harris hits very hard. Walt Harris will probably TKO him at some point. Harris, of course, has a win over uh, Cody East, I do believe, as well, who we talked about earlier on the card. Hey, Grand Diaz versus Andre Feely. Two fighters have always been horribly... 
annoyed with picking their fights. Feely is too aggressive for his own good, and Diaz is quite often too passive for his own good. But when he turns the aggression on, it actually works pretty well. I'm looking at the, uh, I believe the Yuri Alcantara fight is a good example of that. I'm going to go with Diaz here. Um, despite the fact that I don't have a lot of belief in him long term, whereas I do, if Feely can learn to temper his aggression a little bit and follow a game plan better, he actually does have a future in the UFC's featherweight division, and I don't think Diaz long term does. I mean, I think he'll be there two, three years from now. I just don't really know if it goes beyond that. But still, uh, right now, I need to see Feely be able to follow a game plan and temper his aggression. And Without that, I think Diaz hits a couple of reactive takedowns, hangs it on the feet well enough, and blankets him on the ground. Uh, Luis Enrique da Silva, a.k.a. Frankenstein, versus Joaquin Christensen, going with Frankenstein via TKO. Uh, another like uh, callback here, he beat Jonathan Wilson last time out um, via TKO. Christensen is a better technical fighter than Wilson is by a long shot, but not the athlete he is. Uh, Frankenstein's got great power, actually pretty decent technique. Not the most athletic guy, I don't think, but probably enough to get this done. Luis Smoka versus Brandon Moreno. I hope that this fight is a late notice replacement. Smoka by decision. I just, there's not really anything else to break down here. It's, flyweight tends not to be tends not to be um, terribly finish happy, and Smoka is just a metrically better fighter. This this fight makes so little sense. Uh, Josh Berkman versus Zach Otto. I'm going with Berkman to win a decision there. Will Brooks versus Alex Cal by Oliver. All right. After two really kind of crappers to open up the main card, we have a good one. Uh, in Will Brooks, you have a former Bellator champion, very physically strong, very good wrestler. Stand is actually pretty good. Very good process in the way of breaking down opponents. If you give him enough time, he will find a way to win. He's kind of a guy who's built for five round fights. This is a three rounder, so that makes it interesting. Oliveira, very big for the weight class, very athletic actually, very explosive, very strong, actually pretty technical all things considered. Considering he's not been training for a tremendously long period of time um, on a serious level, I am going to go with Will Brooks though. I think that. The first round could be rocky for him, but he should be able to figure out how to beat Oliveira down the long stretch. He should be able to hang with him at all ranges on the feet, should be able to take him down, should be able to use the clinch as a weapon in that regard, should be able to hold him down, should be able to blanket him, maybe a rear naked choke or something, but probably decision. Will Brooks by decision. It would not surprise me if he were to lose this fight, though. Uh, and finally, this one I've been going back and forth on, but I, I keep coming back to John Dodson on this one. Um... Obviously, both of these guys are extremely powerful punchers, and the concern with Dodson is, to a certain extent, cardio, uh, which the weight cut will possibly help. He, of course, was fighting a flyweight. This is uh, at Bantamweight, his second or third fight. I know he fought Manny Gamburian at 135 and won that fight emphatically. I think, when it comes down to it, that Lineker is not overly used to fighting fighters that are faster than him. And Dodson is faster than him. And Dodson is very powerful, very good at finding the target, as is Lineker. Like, everything I'm saying here applies to Lineker. These two are incredibly similar fighters. Heavy-handed, but they approach it differently. Lineker has a better sustained style that I think can last well over five rounds. And Dodson has a much more explosive, flurry-based style, burst energy style, which is why his cardio doesn't hold up as well. I do think that there's enough holes in Lineker's game that Dodson can use that superior speed. And I'm going to say athletic ability because, again, speed and explosiveness are, are really tied to that. I think Dodson has the edge in both of those um, to win. Lineker, I can't remember a time he beat someone reasonably technical who was a better athlete than him. It would not surprise me to see him knock him out. It would not surprise me to see him take a five-round decision here. But if I'm betting bet, I go Dodson on this one. So Dodson, TKO at some point. I think, he, I think he catches him with a flurry. So that's my thoughts on the card. Uh, the main card, not so strong. The top two fights are actually pretty interesting fights, but the bottom two are... 
bad. The, the, the worst fights on the card, to be honest. The fight pass portion is actually very interesting. Chock full of a lot of very intriguing prospects. And the Fox Sports 2 card is not too bad at all, actually. I'm really looking forward to seeing Richardson versus uh, Frankenstein. I'm really looking forward to seeing Diaz versus Feely, although I'll be frustrated. Um, can't say that I'm super looking forward to the other two fights, but they're not bad. So that's my thoughts. Uh, hopefully uh, everyone enjoys the card. Uh, again, it's free, so can't really complain. Um, I am thinking about doing a non-prediction video in regards to the whole Cyborg Santos thing, or uh, formerly Cyborg Santos. I, I just, I'm going to slip on that for the rest of time, um, but Cyborg Giussiano, uh, and whether the UFC should do a featherweight class or not, and why this whole talk of her going down to bantamweight needs to end. Just end. Because it's not going to happen. Um, and also the whole uh, lightweight featherweight thing with Conor McGregor. And my opinions on both those topics may not be the most popular of things, but we'll see. Maybe. So feedback on that if you want. Thoughts on the predictions. And as always, have a good day.